So remember, call Mr. Plow. That's my name. That name again is Mr. Plow. Today's video is brought to you by Card Kingdom, and you can pre-order all of the Strixhaven cards you need right now by heading over to CardKingdom.com. Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another edition of Meme or Dream, the series where we take some pretty janky looking lists that Wizards publishes from Magic Arena, saying they got six wins or more in a row at Platinum Baker, better in best of three, and put them to the test and try to find out, are they a meme and as janky as they look, or maybe they're a dream hanging out behind a janky exterior. In this week's deck, on one hand, it looks looks pretty normal. I mean, we had a full sideboard, a weird sideboard, but a full sideboard, including a Geos Turtle, uh, of course. Uh, so we have a sideboard, which is good. We have a functional curve. We even have some good cards, like Maul is a good card. Sky's Game Apparition's a good card. There's also some weirdness. Nico Eris hasn't seen much play. Ghostly Pilfer, some snow stuff kind of randomly. But what really sold me on this deck is as I continue to look it over, I realized, oh my goodness, this is a giant ox colossal plow deck. Giant ox and colossal Plow, plow four copies of each like that's one of our primary plans that's not just like we had a one of in the sideboard or something we're trying to uh <laughs> crew up the colossal plow with the good old zero six which uh pretty good for crewing uh thanks to its ability to crew equal to its toughness rather than its power and gain some life make some mana ramp into uh, i don't know starheim unleash i guess big nico heiresses so that's what sold me on it colossal plow giant ox in a blue white tempo shell that is also kind of wonky looking so we're gonna find out is colossal plow with the help of giant ox a meme or dream let's uh jump into some games and see if this deck can actually win some. I, I actually have no idea what to think about this deck. To me, this looks like a good against the odds deck. That's how I would qualify this one. We've played some really bad Meme or Dream decks where it's just like completely non-functional. To me, this looks like someone wanted to build a Colossal Plow Giant Ox deck. Like that, those were there against the odds cards. And they actually built a pretty functional deck around it. So we'll see. The main question is going to be, is Colossal Plow and Giant Ox, like, can that part of the deck actually work? And can the other weird random stuff in the deck actually support it? Yeah, let's, uh, let's give it a shot, and we will, uh, we'll find out. This hand is fine. We could use a, I can't believe I'm saying this, we could really use a Colossal Plow. <laughs> If we find a Colossal Plow, look out. A little annoying that our lands are all coming into play tapped here, but, ugh, Mono Red? Well, you know what's, you know what's good at blocking? <laughs> <laughs> that would be a giant ox. <laughs> snow, snow covered blades go. Would really love to just draw an untapped land. That would make us pretty happy. Oh my god. All right, Skyclave Apparition Part Three. I mean, the Skyclaves are going to be great if we can actually cast them. We really need one more land. Giant Ox can do some blocking, but I don't know if it can keep us alive forever because eventually our opponent's going to start Ember Cleaving. So we're really going to need to be able to start killing our opponent's stuff with these Skyclaves. We're going to get white here. I mean, we're infinitely far away from casting Nico, but ooh, all right. We'll play this. Skyclave Apparition. Get rid of Fireblade Charger. I do like Triple Apparition now that we can cast it. Uh, boot it. No attacks. Ooh. I'll play a land. <laughs> play a giant ox. Play a Luminarchus pirate. Uh. I guess we put the counter on Skyclave. No attacks. If we attack into this and they have Bone Crusher, we get blown out. Or, uh. Wow. Wow, we play a giant ox and they scoop. <laughs> Got him! Got him, got him, got him. Okay. Uh, so, do we have anything that's good? We have an all-blue sideboard. Not complaining because we have a sideboard. Man. Is this the Geus Turtle matchup? It actually might be. It does block for days. What is bad in this matchup? What does this even do? When it becomes a tap, you can pay two to draw a card. When your opponent casts a spell from anywhere other than the hand draw card. 
discard a card, it can't be blocked this turn. Seems good against adventures. I think we can go down Ghostly Pilfer in this matchup, though. Avalanche Caller might be okay. What is our plan against Embercleave in specific, is the question. Essence Scatter's a little slow on the draw. You know what? Let's let's have lunch caller. <laughs> let's try it like I don't know. Let's try it like that. <laughs> this sideboard is full of cards, which is a good thing, but it's full of cards that I have never played before. I can't believe we're sideboarding in a Geas Turtle. That is something I never, I never would have expected. Well, all right. Gonna need another white source, but this hand's not the worst. Boy, malls for literal days. Opponent. Oh boy, robber of the rich, a. Eh? Well, that's gonna be tough. I'm gonna snow covered planes. Opponent is on the play. The so robber of the rich gonna be pretty absurd. Hits a Nico Eris. That's also not great. Starnheim unleashed. Um. Well, let's start foretelling. White mana, please. I'm. I do not want our opponent to cast our Nico Eris. Oh, yeah, this, there goes white mana, and white mana. Yeah, we are getting, uh, we are getting absolutely wrecked by these Robber of the Riches. Thankfully, next game we will theoretically be on the play, if we do indeed lose. And then Robber of the Rich gets a lot worse. Opponent. Steals a Skyclave. And a Colossal Plow. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, this is a thing that happens sometimes. A Budent. Plays an Annex, which we will counter. Ugh. Yeah. Getting these two planes exiled is so bad for us. Uh, well, play an island, play an avalanche caller. Fortell. Trying to get low enough on cards that our opponent does not get to keep drawing with Robber of the Rich. Frostbite. Fireblade Charger. Oh my goodness. Alright, sure. <laughs> well, Robber of the Rich is a card that, if you uh, are on the play, is absurd. And our opponent had two of them. <laughs> like, not much more to say about that. Opponent instantly rejoined the game. So they're not taking out the Robber of the Riches uh, based on play draw, which is probably good news for us. You know what? We're going to keep this. This is very much like our first hand, where if we draw another white source for these Skyclaves, we're going to be great. Uh, opponent seems to be... Mm, this is a technique that I've seen on Arena recently. It, at least it feels like. Mono-red players potentially intentionally mulliganing to turn on Robber of the Rich. Which is one of the more London mulligany things I've, I've, uh, I've ever seen. Well, we will Fabled Passage and get a Snow-Covered Plains. Really need another White Source. Opponent hits us. Well, play a land and Giant Ox. White mana, white mana, we need white mana. Yeah, what are you going to do about that, opponent? <laughs> Fireblade Charger, sure. Pat. Oh, yes, that's white mana. I'll play this. Uh, play Luminarch Aspirant. We are actually going to grow the Giant Ox. Because now it can actually kill these things. And if our opponent has removal... <laughs> That's two games in a row? Like, we lost the in-between one to the opponent being on the plane having double robber of the rich. But... That's two games against Mono Red where we played a Giant Ox and our opponent scooped. 
maybe it's busted. Maybe it, maybe that's the secret against all these aggro decks. What do you do? What do you do, Mono Red? <laughs> How do you get through a giant ox? Apparently, the answer is you don't, and you concede. Well, we didn't do any plowing, but we did do some oxing. <laughs> Colossal Plow is one of the, the hardest cards to build a deck around and talk about without it in unintentionally coming across a very adult-themed <laughs> wizards. Wizards, why? <laughs> uh, all right, on to the next one. Can we do some more plowing? Well, can we do some plowing? Can we do some more oxing? We've already done oxing. Ooh, that's a plow. Well, now all we need is an ox, and we even get to scry for it. <laughs> Opponent. Assault eye. Well, temple. I mean, I don't think we can not keep a Luminarch Aspirant, even though it definitely does not turn on this Colossal Plow. Opponent. Land and passes. Well, play land... Play e hmm. Yeah, let's just saw it coming. Opponents got mana up, so they can probably just like Heartless Act our Aspirant. If we wait till they're tapped out, then we can potentially keep it around through a Heartless Act at least. Alright, opponent's gonna go ramping. Sure. Yeah, it's not bad. Playland, Ascendant Spirit, Luminarch Aspirant, Grow the Aspirant past the turn. Pony could definitely have sweepers too. Uh, put it. Has a sweeper too. Hmm. One, two, three, four, five. Ha. Huh. What do we want to do here? We can Nico and start making shards. What's the worst they're going to do with their mana? Yeah, let's just Nico. Nico X1. Get a shard. Get a shard. Opponent. I feel like after sideboarding, we can sideboard in a ton of counters and kind of be like a weird blue-white control deck, which might actually be pretty good in this matchup. Uh, well, let's make a shard. Pathway on white. Colossal Plow. Pass the turn. We need an ox? We need an ox. <laughs> We're getting close. The problem is our opponent's up to six mana, which means they're getting close to emerging ultimatums and so forth. The one card combo cards. About it. Passes. Well, Saga Shard. Uh, don't need us. No, we need a. We need an ox. Well, we draw land. Another thought coming is actually fine. Well, take up Nico. Land on white. Foretell. Pass the turn. Okay, okay. We're not in the worst of shape. We've drawn two of our three main deck counters, which is pretty good against. Emergent Ultimatum. Wilflow Haven, sure. And a land. Opponent's passing. Well, shard. Hmm. I guess we can keep that. And shard. Yeah, we're not going to keep the second one. Oh my god, more plows. <laughs> uh, 
We're we're not doing much. Oh my god! It's a, there. It is. That's an ox. All right, uh, giant ox. <laughs> Crew it. <laughs> yes, we found it. Uh huh. Now what, opponent? Now what? About to get plowed. <laughs> Colossally. <laughs> Gonna combat. Heartless act. Since we have another plow, we're just gonna let that go, I think. I'm really worried about losing to our opponent's big things. Well, make a shard. Pass the turn. You're gonna play it very conservatively. I really don't want to tap out and then lose to Emergent Ultimatum. That seems unwise. Well, all right. Or Seagate Restoration. All right. Counter it. Opponent passing. Well, crack the shard. Nico's been doing some work. Eh, we'll keep a land. That's fine. Keep a land. Untap. Pathway on blue. Take up Nico. One, two. One, two. Let's see. One, two. One, two. Hmm. Well... Foretell, behold the multiverse. Play another colossal plot. Leave up mana for our saw it coming. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, we'll leave back, uh, babe here. Opponent. Wow. All right. There is not many better feelings than your opponent main phase cycling a tr triome. That means that they are not about to kill you <laughs> in general. Another Wolf Fellow Haven. Yeah. Not going to counter that. Opponent passing. Well, behold the multiverse. Bottom, bottom. Untap. Let's try this again. Crew the plow. Go to combat. Come on. Come on. <laughs> oh, we're not going to spend our counter. Opponent really doesn't want to get plowed. Uh, Colossal plow. Ghostly Pilfer. Make a shard. Pass the turn. Oh, we're so close. Elspeth's Nightmare, certainly. No. No, not the oh, opponent. Not the ox. Alright, kills the ox. That's going to make it hard to turn on our plow. Well, can we find another ox? The plow's heavy. It is hard to pull. One, two, three. One, two. Well, I guess we can do it this way. All right, so we untap. We play Skyclave Apparition. Get rid of Elspeth's Nightmare. We play... Oh, we're going to have to full control this, I think. Luminarch Aspirant. Take up Nico.
go to combat counter on Luminarch Aspirant. Before we go to attacks, crew the plow. Are we finally going to get in a plow with- Ah! Oh, it finally happened! Plow you! Make some mana. Foretell. Pass the turn! Okay! Okay! <laughs> it's happening! About it. Lad. A virgin ultimatum, yeah. I think that is a, a bad a bad idea to resolve. Oh! Pony got plowed and scooped it up! <laughs> okay. Very good. Now, we get two rewinds. Actually, maybe we don't have that many counters. We get two rewinds. We bring the Gadwick. I guess confounding conundrum? Uh, Essence Scatter doesn't seem super helpful. We will go down. What? Nico, Nico was great that game. Nico just uh, doing its thing of ticking up, ticking down, ticking up, tipping down to make the shards. Like that was huge. Yeah, I guess we don't have as many counters as I was hoping. Are we going down Pilfer again? I feel like Pilfer's main value is. Well, maybe we've got a couple Skyclaves. I think Pilfer's main value is definitely against, like, Nye Adventures or decks like that. Decks that are constantly casting adventure cards from, uh, from Exile seems really good there. But I don't know if the Emergent Ultimatum, like, technically Emergent Ultimatum is casting cards from a, a place other than their hand, but if our opponent's Emergent ultimatum we are likely just losing anyway. Sounds okay. Well, Snow Cover Plains, Aspirant, grow it. That's not bad. <clears throat> Gets it out of Heartless Act range, at least. Would like to dodge Elspeth's Nightmare. All right. Well, that's not optimal. Well, in that case, Snow Cover Island, Nico. We are going to lose our rewind, which is awkward, but at least we get to start making shards. Yeah, we had plans for this rewind. Yeah, one counter down. Opponent land cracks it. Gets a island. Oh. Sagas for days. Uh, Fabled Passage, crack it. Grab a snow-covered island. Luminarch Aspirant. Foretell. Pass the turn. Upload it. Gets to ramp. The scary part is, we don't actually have negates in our sideboard, which is... No negates, no disdainful strokes. Our counters are good against creature decks, not as good against what our opponent's doing. About it passes. Well, pathway on blue. Go to combat, grow a spirit, hit ya. So we might be, like, desperately spitting this Behold the Multiverse to try to find... a counter to Emergent Ultimatum. Opponent, tap land. Also foretells. Well, behold the multiverse. Has a negate. Not great. Uh, another Luminarch Aspirant doesn't really help us here. Nico. Well, this is where death comes by. Emergent ultimatum. Yeah, opponent has negates. We could also use negates. Well, attempt to Nico. Uh, 
opponent's gonna but oh well we're hoping for a miracle we're hoping for a miracle the miracle we're hoping for is that our opponent does not have their one card combo of emergent ultimatum if they have emergent ultimatum it's just i mean it's just there's not much you can do about it they just got you opponent Iron's Epiphany takes an extra turn. Well, it's not emergent ultimate. Sweet mother. All right. Well, <laughs> and we scoop it up. Yeah, this is a matchup where negate would be pretty helpful. But uh, can't get played too much because our opponent, they do have a sideboard. Yeah, emergent ultimatum is just, if it resolves, you lose. That's it's as simple as that. Like if your opponent resolves it, you just you lose the game. I'm sure there are situations where that doesn't happen, but 90 something percentage uh percent of the time, it is just it is just a one card combo kill. Well, all right. I do like that we have a counter that we can hide away. Going to be hard to level up this ascendant spirit. Opponent doing some mulliganing. We got the ox. We don't have the plow to go with it, though. Oh, boot it. Well, play this on blue and ascend the spirit. Go. Oh, boot it. Tap land. Now play the land. Hmm. Uh, yeah, well, let's hide the counter spell. I feel like that's more important than the card draw, as crazy as that sounds. Opponent. Land. Heartless Act. Sure. Well. Foretell. Scry Land. Keep the lad past the turn. <laughs> Could potentially run out Ox and put Maul on it. <laughs> Go to town. Does our opponent have ramp? Uh, yup. Yup, yup. Well, that's not ideal. I'll play the land past the turn. Opponent. Land. Azika's Chariot. Now let's behold the multiverse. Bottom top. Ugh, so many malls. Counter Azika's Chariot. I'll play Pilferer. Saw it coming. Pass the turn. We're tapped out, but our opponent can't play any of their big finishers this turn, which is nice. Tap land. And. Removal. Well, Giant Ox. <laughs> Go. We could use some lads. We only have one counter. Our opponent's getting up to the part of the game mana-wise where the big bad things that make us die can happen. Well, play this on blue. Maul the Skyclave. Here it comes. Boom. That's a 2-8. Take that, opponent. <laughs> I would love to Gadwick. The problem is if we Gadwick and our opponent has a Burgia ultimatum, we just die. Opponent. Omen of the Sea. Going to go scrying for a way to win the game. Oh! Two cards to the top. Not good. Not good at all. Scries. To the bottom. That's a bold strategy. Wait. Why? Why would you do that? <laughs> Pony Scry to the top with Omen of the Sea. Play to Scryland and Scry the second one they put to the top to the bottom. 
all right, I guess somehow they changed their mind in that <laughs> that five second window. I really want a Gadwick, but we just lose so easily. Hmm. Well, let's Skyclave Apparition. I mean, if our opponent sacks it to Scry, that's kind of fine, because then if our Skyclave dies, they don't get anything back. And our opponent doesn't have the best track record about Scrying. Wow, they're playing a Yarion deck without Yarion. That might be the craziest thing I've ever seen. They're playing an 80-card deck with no Yarion. Why? Why would you play a Yarion amount of cards and not have Yarion as your companion? Yeah, Merging Ultimatum. Counter backup. One card combo. Yeah. Oh, no counter backup. All right, not dead yet. Not dead yet. Well, go to combat. Hit ya. Well, I mean, this is all we can do. Gadwick, hope. <laughs> a Maul of the Nox, not, not as good as... Okay, Disdainful Stroke. Not as good as... Oh, come on now. Well, sure. <laughs> 80 cards. No Yarion. But two emerging ultimatums. Fair enough. Well, I guess our opponent gets an extra turn, and they get a Voring Clax. Yeah, and we take six, and then we take eight. Opponent on tap draws. Cycles of Triome. Omen of the Sea. Yeah, so I will say, I do appreciate that our deck has a sideboard. Although, uh, it might be worth playing some more counters that are actually good in this matchup, rather than counters that are only good against creature decks. Something that might be worth considering. Opponent's crying like crazy. Thankfully, our opponent has not really scared us with their scry ability two to the top that's unfortunate uh, opponent I mean they did just scry 10 so I guess even if you're not good at scrying somehow if you scry enough maybe maybe it works out well hmm I guess we just gotta pass our opponent left two cards on top which is not good Oh, come on! Oh, well, on to the next one. <laughs> I will say this deck, it seems like it is very set up for creature decks, not very set up for Yarion decks. That would be, that would be my biggest takeaway. Many, many choices that are good if we run into like, hey, I'm playing random creatures. Uh, not as good if it's like, oh, one card combo with Emergent Ultimatum several times in a row. <laughs> well, I don't think we can keep this, because... Oh, uh, I don't think we can keep this, because we just can't cast anything. Well, this I guess we will keep. Put a Starnheim Unleashed to the bottom. Opponent's on the play. This time, our opponent's 80-card deck does have Yarion. Oh, is this just the same exact matchup, but with a Yarion this time? Hmm, okay. Opponent. Pathway. And Foretells. Well, let's foretell. Attack for one. Nah, 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 dude. Uh, boot it. 
pathway and passes well play an island go to combat attack you I think part of the reason our deck is better against aggro is against aggro giant ox actually does something even if it's not crewing a colossal plow but against against uh, control decks giant ox it really needs a plow we even had the mall on it in the past and it it's just not very good in those scenarios. Opponent. I'm sure they have a bunch of Wraths to deal with these Ascendant Spirits, so leveling them up seems pretty questionable in this matchup. Cultivate. Well, behold the multiverse. Definitely do not need more planes and giant oxen at the moment. Oh, okay. Well, those are magic cards, I guess. Found it. Get some lands. Passes. Well. Level up. Level up. Get Wrath. <laughs> Take that opponent. Down to 14. Whatever will you do. Land. And passes. Well, we play the land. play Luminarchus Pirate. Problem is, one card combo, win the game next turn. I feel like... Hmm. Go attacking. Opponent has a Heartless Act. Well, let's level up the Ascendant Spirit that's not dying. Hit you for five. Maybe. And cross our fingers there's not an Emergent Ultimate. Oh, dear. Bold Multiverse. Two to the bottom. Draw, draw. Opponent. Land. Omen of the Sea. Well, not an emerging ultimatum, so that's that's something. Binding of the Old Gods. That's worse. Well, play the land. Skyclave Apparition. Get rid of the Binding of the Old Gods. Colossal Plow. Girl, the Aspirant hits you down to seven. Oh, opponent's got the mana, though. And we don't have the answers. Land. Aurens Epiphany. Extra turn. Land. Emergent Ultimatum. And we scoop it up. <laughs> oh, I promise we will not play more Yarian matchups. This is two. Two is enough. Two is enough. So if we run into another one, we will. Uh, we will go searching for for other possibilities to play against. Um. Well, what are we cutting? Let's go down the Pilfers and one Skyclave. Run it like that. Oh, uh, boot it. Well, we'll play first. Not great. Well, okay. That's an Ox and a Plow. <laughs> I don't know if it matters because our opponent has... Heartless Axe and so forth, so our plow might just uh, die, but we'll see. So I guess we're trying to scry into an untapped land, theoretically. Uh, Behold is a good card, but we really need to be able to play this. We need to be able to ox into plow. That is, that is the game plan. Well, or Ascendant Spirit. Ascendant Spirit has not felt all that impressive to me, at least in this deck. Opponent, forest. 
and Sorceress Spyglass. Not sure why our opponent's bringing that in, but they are going to be able to name Nico, which is a bit awkward. I mean, or they name Ascendant Spirit, I guess. Name's Ascendant Spirit. Well, we whiff on lands, play Colossal Plow, go attacking. All right, tap out, let us plow. <laughs> we can't even do anything with our plow mana, which is doubly awkward at the moment. So I'm for our opponent, or Black Source for our opponent. Manually tapping. Wolf Willow Haven. Well, we draw land. Play Giant Ox. Opponent Omen of the Sea. Well, we get to get in a plow hit. Unfortunately, we can't do anything with it post plow hit, but. Crew up the plow. Hit ya. I mean, it is seven damage, and we gain some life that doesn't really matter. Next turn, if we could do it, with Gadwick and Nico in hand, we could actually use the plow mana to do something spectacular. Opponent. Land. <sighs> Shadow's Verdict. Well, play a sad Nico. Scry. Skyclave to the bottom. Make a shard. Go. I mean, Plow does survive the Wrath. It doesn't do anything after a Wrath because it is uh, very difficult to crew with our Ox in the graveyard or in the Exile Zone. Uh, about it. Valky to take our Gadwick. Alright, things keep getting worse. Opponent passes. Uh, 4 4 flyer doesn't do much, does it? Let's, uh, crack the shard. Looking for an ox. Land to the bottom. Draw land. Foretell. Snow-covered eyelid, make a shard, go. Yeah. Pass the turn. Land. Yarion. Opponent. Hits Nico, kills it. Draws more cards. Hmm. Well, one thing we've learned is the Yarion matchup does not feel uh, anywhere near good. Boom. Make a couple angels. Not that they do anything, because Yarion just blocks them for days, but, well, crew up the plow. Opponent has a Heartless Act. I don't go attacking. Make some mana. Gain some life. Upload it. Takes it. Well, we might as well crack the shard. Definitely do not need more lands. Definitely, definitely. Alright, more lands. Temple of Enlightenment. Scry. Oh, we'll keep Saw it coming, but our opponent's far enough ahead now that a counter... Well, for one thing, they can just win this turn. For another thing... Yeah, well, there's the win this turn. So, I don't think that Yarion decks are a good matchup for this deck. Uh, I think that we have clearly seen. We've played it twice, and we just do not have... There's two things you want against Yarion decks. Uh, there's there's two options that I think are good. One is you can be more controlling 
and just have a ton of counters and punish your opponent for trying to tap out for six, seven, eight drops. Uh, so that's one option, but our deck doesn't really do that. We have a couple of counters, but not enough to really be a full control deck. The other way that you can beat Yarion decks is just be really aggressive. Like mono red, mono white, those decks feast on Yarion decks for the most part. Uh, so that is the way to go. But our deck, while we can kind of sometimes be aggressive. We're doing it with some really janky, weird way. It's not like we can just, you know, dump our hand of one and two drops and kill you really quickly. So I feel like Yarian matchups are, are kind of the nightmare for this deck. We're just two in the middle. We're not controlling enough to, to stop them from their one card combos. And we're not aggro enough to kill them before they get to their one card combos. And uh, that's not a good place to be if your goal is to, uh, to win. Thankfully, no Yarian has been revealed yet. Well, Temple of Enlightenment. You know what? We probably actually keep Ghostly Pilfer. Triome. Well, Land and Pilfer. Is this another control deck? <laughs> This is like Memer Dream Control Edition. Opponent. Oh, it's cycling. Hmm. Alright. Well, plan land. Skyclave Apparition. Get rid of the Stinger. Pill for you. Well, this is going to be about stopping Zenith Flares, I think. Also, figuring out a way to kill our opponent through lots of blockers. Another Stinger. Uh, opponent cycles pings sure now we get to draw a card fable passage crack it get a blue source Go attacking. Opponent takes it. All right, well, we will foretell. Ox isn't doing much yet. Pass the turn. Opponent down to 14. Land and ooh, flourishing fox. So we're going to need to find a removal for that because that gets real big real quick. Big enough that I'm not even sure the ox can stop it. Cycles grows it. Yeah, and we get pinged. Yeah, we need more removal, and we need it soon. Opponent goes to combat. Gets in for two. Down to 16. Well, I mean, I guess we keep paying the two. We draw land. Luminarch Aspirant. Now, Fable Passage, crack it. Thin the deck. Grab a island. Luminarch Aspirant. We have not done nearly as much plowing as we were hoping. Go to combat. Counter on the pilfer. Attack. Discard a land. Hit ya. Down to 11. Pass the turn. Wow. Opponent didn't cycle. Interesting. I assume that means many Zenith Flares and lands are in hand. Alright, Valiant Rescuer. Cycles, pings, grows. Yeah. Draws a card. Opponent. Attacks. Oh, I'm really tempted to double block. I guess we take it. Down to 12. Untap. Uh, no drawing this time. More lands. Uh, well, behold the multiverse. 
bottom, bottom. Oh, I guess we got to keep saw it coming. Oh, this is bad in a bunch of ways. Uh, well, play the ox. Temple of Enlightenment, scry. Land of the bottom. Ascendant spirit. Discard a land, hit ya, grow ya. I'll pwn it down to seven, but set it flare. One, two, three in the graveyard at the moment. How's it gonna be close? The ox can do some blocking, which is good. This ghostly pilfer is unblockable if we keep discarding stuff, which is good. about it land I guess I could like Zenith for the pilfer Iron Craig Pyromancer oh no well oh improbable lions okay well not dead yet oh my god about it we are all in on this pilfer um decline play a land behold the multiverse cast it uh sure behold the multiverse and saw it coming Discard Behold the Multiverse. Combat. Cowrod Pilfer. Hit you for five. I mean, this is our plan. We're outside of Pyromancer Rage. So all we want to do is sit back, relax, counter something that would kill us, and theoretically win the game? Yeah. And Pyromancer, a little bit late with the trigger, but here it comes. I mean, we will jump block everything. Gets a 1-1, one, one, sure. Kills Ascendant Spirit, sure. Combat. Attacks. I think we got it. I think this Ghostly Pilferer... <laughs> is going all the way. <laughs> well, we didn't get the... You know, you know, I mean, you gotta go for it, or else you're dead. We will block and block. Stay at 11, untap. Decline. Discard Ascendant Spirit. Wow, that actually worked. <laughs> Counter on Pilfer. Cycles. Sure. There's no way they're going to kill us, though. And if they draw something that matters, we can... counter it. Sure. Yeah, keep it going. We get pinged. Opponent gets a free lightning bolt. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Well, pilfer cannot be blocked. Wow. Well, that is <laughs> a way to win a game, I guess. <laughs> Uh, what do we have that's good against cycling, though? Hmm. So we don't really have more removal. I don't think we want the turtle. I mean, I guess we do have raven form. Maybe that's worth it? They're not playing Lurus, by the looks. Unless they're just main decking it, which I guess is possible. What are we going to cut? 
So evasion seems pretty valuable. Cards I'm interested in are, I guess, Essence Scatter and maybe Raven Form. I guess flying doesn't seem that exciting. Since we saw that our opponent has answers uh, and can make a bunch of little flyers. So maybe like trim a couple malls, trim a Nico, two essence scatters, a raven form. And then ascendant spirit for a raven form. And maybe that's it. Could also bring it... Maybe we went on a Starnheim Unleash for a rewind. I mean, we still do need to be careful about getting janked out by the big burn spell. That is kind of the payoff. Our opponent didn't hit it that game, but... All right. <sighs> lots of plows, not many lands. Lots of oxen, not many plows. Oh, all right. Ox to the bottom. I mean, I guess this is not a horrible hand. We do need to keep hitting lands, but... Well, there's our, there's our friend the Pilferer. Sneaky all-star Pilferer. Uh, Boudin. Untaps. Land and... All right, there's Stingy. Uh, crack this, get a planes. <laughs> so many oxen, so few plows. Go, sleep pilfer, go. All right, lands, please. Lands and plows. Lands and plows. We got to plow the land, opponent. <laughs> Ox is so matchup dependent. Cycles a fox. So opponent might be having land troubles. Although, if all your cards cycle, you're going to hit your lands eventually. Opponent finds a white mana. Glass casket. All right. All right. Come on, land. Come on, land. Opponent hits us. Down to 17. All right. There's a land. A run out Skyclave. Get rid of the glass casket. Get back our ghostly pilfer. Pass the turn. Would still like just another blue source. Ooh, improbable alliance. That's scary. And cycles and flyers and pinging. Yeah. Well, now we could also use another Skyclave apparition. Multiple 1 1s a turn are tough. Opponent goes attacking. Well, sure. I think we'd rather them have a 2 2 than uh, a Dranith Stinger. Now, well, play the plow. No attacks. Well, that's our game plan. That's our game plan. We get to get in a plow attack. Unfortunately, our opponent might be able to just kill it with, in combat with all these 1 1s they're getting for free. Opponent plays a land, goes combat, attacks with everything. Yeah, we'll take it. Down to 13. Land? It is a land. All right, Fabled Passage, Crag Fabled Passage. Get a island. Giant Ox. Through the plow. <laughs> combo. It's a combo. Combat. Hit ya. No. Wow. And we don't have the mana for it. Alright. Yeah. Ugh. Missing those land drops was rough. Well, <laughs> all 
Oxen for days. Oxen for days. Opponent. Land. Really need a way to get rid of this improbable alliance, but apparently that is improbable. Opponent heads us down to 11. Passes. <laughs> like, what do we even do? Like, what do we even do here? Does Guard Luminarch is Byron? I mean, we gotta we gotta find a way to draw into. Yeah, I mean, we gotta find a way to draw into an answer to Improbable Alliance, and we gotta do it quick because we can't beat these flyers. About it. Uh, I don't even know if we bother to counter that. Sh sure. Opponent gets in with the flyers. Oh, if we could have kept our plow going and our opponent didn't have that zenith flare, or if we had the mana, we would uh, we would be in business. And we draw some lands. Snow covered island. Pass the turn. <laughs> opponent goes to combat. It says. Yeah, sure. Down to seven. Ha ha. <laughs> okay. Boom. Maul the sky claves. Phone negates. We gotta counter the negate because we actually really need this. <laughs> yeah, there it is. We have defense. The flying ox. <laughs> save us, save us, giant ox from these these fairies. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we can't really attack. We pass the turn. Soul Sears, the pilferer. Opponent untaps. Loots to make a fairy. So I think any chance we have starts with... Skyclave Apparition to get rid of Improbable Alliance. I don't think our opponent realizes Ox gets to block them. Okay. Well, there's Skyclave Apparition. To get rid of Improbable Alliance. Not over yet. Not over yet. Pass the turn. Now we need card draw. Opponent's going to cycle. Cycling isn't doing too much for our opponent at the moment, though. About it. Wow, going to keep slamming fairies into Oxen. Sure. Down to five. Play a Pilfer. I mean, we're in this. This isn't over. This is not over yet. About it. Land. Passes. Well, we will discard a land. Hit ya. Down to 20. Get the card draw engine going. About it. <laughs> Ox power. Passes. Well, we will draw a land and a land. Well, discard a land. Hit ya. Down to 18. Play the land past the turn. 
<laughs> Opponent, lead. Passes. Well, keep drawing. Another ox. Well, discard the ox. Hedge ya. Down to 16. Scryland. Well, all right, all right, all right. We'll keep it. That speeds up our... The Pilfer plan worked last game. Rael. Huh. <laughs> the problem is if we counter it, we die to Zenith Flare. But if we don't counter it, that's a lot of card draw. Alright. I guess you get a Rael. And there's a Cycling. Extra card draw. Yeah, this is going to get bad. Well, come on. More Skyclave Apparitions, please. Oh, jeez. Well, I mean, we got to counter this. We lose to that just as much as we lose to Zenith Flare. Opponent passes. We will draw a card. Discard the land. Luminarchus Pirate. Go to combat. Counter on Pilfer. Hit ya. Hit ya. Pwn down to 11. Pass the turn. Cycles. Draws two. Opponent. Flourishing Fox. And. Land. Passes. Well, draw a card. Land. Behold the multiverse. Well, one, two, three, four. Behold the multiverse. Opponent cycles, draws two. Yeah, Riley is really strong in this deck. And finds a negate. Well, discard the land. Grow the pilfer. Hit ya. Opponent gonna block. Down to seven. Well, let's see if they find it. Opponent on taps. Theoretically, we are presenting lethal next turn. Zenith Flare kills us on the spot. Valiant Rescuer. That doesn't kill us on the spot. Cycles. Draws two. Well, this is huge. If our opponent whiffs here... We can win this game. About it. Oh! Draws the souls here. All right. Well, opponent did not whiff here. Opponent goes attacking and attacking and attacking. Well, kill Riel, block the 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, Riel went off. That was so much value. Opponent cycles. Grows the fox. We go to three. Opponent gets a dork. Land and death. Oh, oh boy, that was so close. Hmm. Well.
I like to say that having any sideboard is better than having no sideboard. And I will stand by that. However, I don't feel like this sideboard is all that effective. <laughs> But it's still very much a step in the right direction. I, I will take it. I will take it. It's not a complaint. Because uh, throw in the random cards. Like, throw in the Aegeus Turtles. That's fine. We can deal with it. We can live with the Aegeus Turtles over no cards at all. However, so far it hasn't felt good in most matchups. Outside of, like, aggro, then it's fine-ish. All right, we got to plow. This doesn't keep our opponent from just running us over, but that's kind of a our deck thing, I think. Uh, opponents doing some mulliganing. I mean, mulliganing is pretty irrelevant in the cycling deck. I guess it matters a tiny bit, but in general, when all your cards cycling, as long as you got a land or two, you're going to find your stuff eventually. Well, we'll see. We get to scry. If we scry into an ox in this plow suite, we'll put the land to the bottom. Opponent. If not, then we're probably just playing pilfer, I guess, on turn two. Red mana passes. Uh, Land on. Doesn't especially matter. Ghostly pilfer, go. Opponent. untaps land and glass casket all right not a crazy cycling payoff so that's good oh there it is oh we could have uh, we could have plowed now play the land scry keep saw it coming for the future oh we could have plowed we would have drawn the ox if we had known about we didn't know about it but we could have would have should have drawn it Valiant Rescuer, sure. Oh! <gasps> plow time. Plow time. Play the land. Crack the land. It's happening. Get a snow-covered island. Giant ox. Colossal plow. Attack you. Make some mana. Opponent takes it. Uh, we will foretell saw it coming. Pass the turn. Opponent. Oh man, it's it's working. It's working. It gets even better next turn too. We'll have even more uses for the mana. Opponent finds blue mana. Hits us. Sure. Well, yeah. Plow. Go to combat. Attack you. Gain some life. I wonder if this could also draw a card. Would that be too good? Opponent, token blocks. Well, use our mana to behold the multiverse. And we're actually going to counter that, I think. Bottom and bottom. Land on blue. Pass the turn. Well, our opponent can block for days, but we're gaining a bunch of life. We don't have an answer to Zenith Flare, but... We can stop a creature. All right, opponent manages to kill the plow. I'll play the land. Uh, 
raven form. Colossal Plow. Little bit risky, because this means our opponent could resolve like a real or something. And that would be bad. That'd be real bad. That'd be real bad. Lad. Lad. <clears throat> Iron Cave Pyromancer is not as bad. It would be hold is good. Well, crew the plow. Go to combat. Attack. Opponent. Bird blocks. Well, draw some cards. Bottom, bottom. Raven form. The Pyromancer. Wow, this is the Colossal Plow Giant Extreme. Like, it is all coming together at the moment. Only two cyclers in the graveyard, so Zenith Flare is not currently a big concern. Giant Ox seems hard for our opponent to kill. Oh, all right, Glass Casket. That's annoying. Opponent hits us. I'll play a Pilferer. Play Ascendant Spirit. Past the turd. Somehow only two snow lands. Pyromancer. Gotta counter that. About it. Passes. Ooh, saw it coming's nice. Well, ascend. Go to combat. Attack you. I actually wouldn't mind another snow land. <laughs> another snow land to level up again would actually be helpful. Opponent. Rael, counter that. Definitely can't let that resolve. Come on, Ox. Come on, Ox. Opponent passes. Well. Hmm. Play a land. Level up. Colossal Plow. <laughs> Go attacking. Opponent. Well, we're out of cards. And our opponent is not. Bird block. Well, let's see what they got. We've been able to stop threats so far. Opponent. Untaps. Come on. Hold. Hold. Opponent. Would really like the pilfer to live. Valiant Rescuer. Opponent passes. Well, we will definitely draw a card. Maybe should have tapped differently. Hmm. Definitely should have tapped differently. Well, play the land. Crack the land. Yeah, if we had tapped differently, we could have leveled up again, which would have been helpful. Uh, get a snow-covered plains. Luminarchus Pirate. Crew. Combat. <laughs> Counter on the plow.
Oh, all right, Pony has an answer. Well, you're a Luminarchus Pirate. Pass the turn. What does our opponent find? Cycles makes a dork. About it. Land and passes. Well, this time we were going to tap properly. Ooh, rewind. And a land. Hmm. <laughs> Oh, leaving up a counter is probably better than ascending, isn't it? Let's discard a land. Go to combat. Counter on Pilfer. Hit ya. So in theory... If our opponent plays something scary, we can rewind it and then level up and then hopefully win. Like two level ups plus the Aspire encounter is nine in the air. I mean, our plow did some work this game. It's not going to, it got rusty, isn't going to make it all the way to the end, but it did do some serious work. Soul Seer on Pilferer. Uh... Sure. I don't think that matters. Opponent. Goes attacking. Sure. You got us. I don't level up. Level up. counter from Aspirant that's nine in the air with two counter backup yeah cycle it sure and attack oh we plowed him we plowed him with exaxes oh that was a close tough tight matchup but the deck is it seems sweet when we're not playing against Yari on decks. <laughs> well, eh, 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 all right. On to the next. That was good. All right. One last chance for Klausoplow to prove that it is a dream rather than a meme. So far, we have, we have learned that Yari on is tough for the deck. But we've won both of our other matchups with the deck. So where does that leave us? Uh, about it. Snow covered mountain. Well, play a land, play a Hmm. Yeah, let's just foretell. Behold the multiverse, pass the turn. Uh boot it. Snow covered mountain. Um, well, we will play the land foretell. Pass the turn. Playing a Lumerica's Pirate in open red mana feels kind of bad. It's just so likely that it dies. Uh, let's Giant Ox. Pass the turn. You know what doesn't die to red removal spells very easily? That would be Giant Ox. <laughs> I mean, I guess they can use multiple removal spells on it, and we're pretty okay with that. If they want to, like, double frostbite Giant Ox, <laughs> we, will, we will accept that outcome. <laughs> well, now we need the plow. We can draw for it. We'll see. It's also possible, I guess, that our opponent's mana screwed is it. All right, they're definitely mono-red. Well, I guess I could still be mana screwed, is it? But likely that they're mono-red. Huh? Okay. It does not gain haste. Uh, behold the multiverse. 
You know, I think we keep both of those. Keep both. Play a land. Luminarch Aspirant. Luminarch Aspirant. We're going to double grow a Luminarch Aspirant past the turn. Get it out of Bone Crusher range. Still gets Frostbitten, but. Opponent. Land. Oh, they could be like an Ugin deck or something. They could also have the Dragon. It seems unlikely that they're red aggro, or they would have done something more than this by now. Does our opponent think this is the one that puts counters on things? Why do they keep just activating this Faceless Haven for no reason? I mean, yeah. <laughs> I guess you got us. Wow. All right, now they frostbite it. Sure. Well, pathway on blue. Nico X3. Make a bunch of shards. Nico, make a shard. Grow Luminarch Aspirant. Hit ya. Well, we got a bunch of card draw. Hopefully we find some counters before... Something like Ugin comes down. Land number six. Would have been nice to kill the Faceless Haven. Not so much because I'm scared of Faceless Haven, but... Wow, it actually worked. Okay. I don't know what's happening. Sure. Opponent. We will block opportunistic dragon oh there's a plow too uh well nico kill fervent champion play a plow and hmm yeah let's pass and draw some cards i really want to find a counter I feel like things could go very badly if we don't find a counter. Wow, losing that Luminarch Aspirant was awkward. I have never in my life seen someone cast Opportunistic Dragon in Standard. Sweet mother. Okay. Well, we will crack a shard. Do not want more Ghostly Pilfers. Opponent going to start making dragons. They do need to attack with it. But the boast ability gets cheaper if our opponent has extra dragons around. Okay, even more dragons. Yeah, I mean, this might actually be getting us. Opponent. Attacks. Attacks. I mean, I guess our best bet is we can attack with the... We can attack with the Colossal Plow, make mana, and then just cast a really big Starnheim Unleashed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Four, four, fours is not bad. Opponents lining up their attacks. Makes a treasure. Well, let's draw a card. Don't really want Maul the Skyclaves. Lose Nico. Drop to 16. Untap. Draw Maul the Skyclaves. We'll play the planes. Fire up the plow. Go attacking. Make some mana gain some life. about it takes it uh well Starnheim Unleashed 
make four angels. Ascendant spirit, go. All right, we got defense at least. Uh, boot it. So this is just like mono red dragons. Interesting. Land. Faceless Haven, sure. Combat. Attacks, attacks. Makes a dragon. Well, we will block and block, 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 block. All right, so stuff dies. We untap. Well, Temple of Enlightenment, scry. Don't really need another ox. Play a... Well, let's foretell. Starnheim. Mall of the Skyclave. are an angel. Not the best value, but it does give us it does give us a first strike, which is nice. Not gonna bother to pilfer this turn. Next turn, we're gonna spend all of our mana on another Starnheim. Um... Yeah, I guess we can attack with an angel. About it. I don't think we want to plow this turn because if we plow this turn, it's probably going to trade in combat, and then we really want the mana next turn when we have Starnheim unleashed. Then we can actually take advantage of of the extra mana. When this turn, I guess we could like crack shards, but not nearly as exciting. All right, your go opponent untaps land. Fireblade Charger. This deck's interesting. So it's got a little bit of, like, mono red in it. We've seen some one drops, but then it's also got a lot more... A lot more dragons. <laughs> the opportunistic dragon did get us pretty well. Oh, opponent. All right, apparently angels beat dragons, at least in that game. Good news is... This seems like a matchup where Essence Scatter is going to be pretty helpful. So Essence Scatter in. Trim Pilfers. Actually, Ascendant Spirit feels even worse. That dies to... Uh... Yeah, let's try it like that. Ascendant Spirit dies to Frostbite even after we level it up once, and that's like the worst case with Ascendant Spirit. If you level it up and then it still dies, ugh. Then you're you're spending a lot of mana for 
for not much. Essence Scatter seems great, though. In one Raven form, eh, can get a dragon or something. <laughs> opportunistic. I mean, that opportunistic dragon was opportunistic. And that was another Plow game. Like, Plow gave us mana for Starbine Unleashed, Starnheim Unleashed, made enough angels that we didn't die to the dragon, so, eh, eh, Claws of Plow, <laughs> Rogan. <laughs> Our trend of being really good against non Yarion decks seems to be holding up. Unfortunately, Salta Yarion's like the most played deck in standard. Yeah, we're not going to keep this. Uh, Salta Yarion is like the most played deck in standard at the moment. Oh, okay. Uh, we'll put one of our Nikos to the bottom. Well, we don't have any of our defense or counters, but we got an Ox. We could find a Plow to go with it. Um, Temple of Enlightenment to the bottom. I mean, our dream is we draw a plow. <laughs> we draw a plow, play it, then ox, crew it, go to town. That is the the best case scenario. Opponent, Castle Embrith, Robber of the Rich. Steals a land, hits us. Well, play a land, play Luminarchus Pirate. Grow it. Uh, booted. Land. And. Frostbite. And, oh no, oh no, oh no. Wow, this is familiar. Steals card draw and a land. I don't play this. Nico. <laughs> Kill a robber. Oh, but stealing those cards was huge. That Behold the Multiverse is going to let our opponent refuel. That is, that is a massive, massive draw. And we had to spend our Nico as a three-mana removal spell. And... I have no idea what's going on in our opponent's deck. Literally no. Yeah, hits a counter. Uh, play a land. Play a giant ox. Play a Luminarchus Pirate. Grow the giant ox past the turn. So now our opponent looks like a normal mono red deck. Maybe our opponent's doing dragon jank out and they're like pretending to be a a bad dragon deck in game one and then just being a normal mono red deck after sideboarding that kind of seems possible fervent champion fireblade charger opponent attacks well we will block the annex Play a land. Hmm. Raven form, robber of the rich. I mean, I guess our opponent also had the double, the double robber of the rich draw on the play, which that's tough for a lot of decks to beat, not just ours. Opponent plays a land. Well, we killed the robbers before our own cards killed us. That's something. Goes attacking. <laughs> Gynox trying to hold down the fort here. Goes attacking. Well, I mean, we block. If they got Embercleave, then I guess... I guess they got us with the, the Dragon Jank out. All right, down to 11. About it. Skyclave would be great. 
All right, opponent still has some dragons. Yeah, not looking good. That double robber of the ridge might be getting us here. Well, snow covered eyelid. More lands. We'll play the land, crack the land. But yeah, we're actually, we can't get out of it now. All right. Well, okay, okay. So I guess our opponent's first game was just a really weird draw. I still don't think... Eh, let's go up one more raven for him. Run it like that. I mean, maybe we should be bringing in the Aegeus Turtle. It does block, and it does get out of our hand quickly. I mean, the thing is, we're on the play now. So unless our opponent's going to do the... <laughs> the mulligan to try to turn on Robber of the Rich technique... The start that our opponent had that game is a lot less likely to happen. All right. We get to play first. You know what? We're going to keep this. Nico Eris seems good at sniping down our opponent's stuff. We're not going to keep another Temple of Enlightenment. About it. Land. Fervent Champion goes attacking. Well, Temple of Enlightenment, scry. To the bottom. Pass the turn. Opponent. Land. Dragonkin Berserker. Opponent attacks. Now, play the land. Skyclave. Get rid of Dragonkin. Pass the turn. I mean, Nico might look weird, but the two damage mode actually seems pretty relevant against our opponent's deck. Opponent, Frostbite. Kill Skyclave, gets in for one. Now play land, Nico. X1. Get a shard. Kill Fervent Champion. Pass the turn. Ooh, opponent finds a land. Hits the Nico. Sure, sure, sure. And Annex. Oh, play the land. Nico. X2. Kill the 2 2. Pass the turn. Well, we'll see. We're building up some shards. Another another Skyclave would be sweet. <laughs> Giant Ox would actually be kind of sweet, too, just to... Wow, go and face. Okay. <laughs> Light up the stage? Not Just not caring about Nico? That's an interesting choice. Uh, okay, Frostbite, that makes sense. Well, we will... You know what, I think we can wait a turn. Let's foretell Raven form. Land on blue. Pass the turn. So we'll leave up a counter. We can start cracking our shards. We can answer the annex next turn. I mean, I feel like we're kind of playing like the control deck at the moment. Thanks to all of our shards and Nico, we should be able to win the long game. Assuming we can get to the long game, opponent Annex hits us. Down to 13. Opportunistic Dragon. Well, we will counter that. Scry draw. Don't want to land. 
Untap. Well, play the land. Raven for Manix. Nico. X3. And then make a shard. Oh, no hasty dragon, please. About it. Robber the Rich. Well, it's not a dragon. Kills Nico, hits us. So, opponent did draw haste off the top. Well, play Luminarch Aspirant. Play a land. Pass the turn. Counter on Aspirant. No attacks. We can draw three. All right, Frostbite again. Opponent combat hits us. We will take it. I mean, hopefully these shards are going to save us here. Well, shard one. The scry is big. The scry is really helpful. Ugh. I don't think we want Raven for him at the moment. Land. All right, well, shard two. <laughs> All right, keep behold the multiverse, I guess. So we got card draw, but can we find answers or blockers or something? All right, Starnheim Unleashed. We will keep it. Draw another land, we'll play the land. Behold the multiverse. Bottom, bottom. Jeez. Um. Oh! Foretell. Oh, this is the awkwardest. Wow. Foretell. Pass the turn. We... This is actually really bad for us. Oh, I think we're going to lose. Two, six, seven. Oh, no. We just, I mean, I love drawing cards, but we just card draw into card draw into card draw. What is our opponent's deal? Oh, they don't get to steal anything. Pumps, okay. So we go to four. We untap. More lands. Well, Fabled Passage, Crag Fabled Passage. Snow covered island. One. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Well, make four angels. Pass the turn. Who? All right. Save us, angels. About it. <laughs> no plows or rocks in this game, but. Nico? Nico time? To make it a dream? An undefeated, <laughs> except for Yari on Salt Eye Piles? About it. Thinking. Opportunistic dragon. Uh, saw it coming's not bad. Well, let's behold the multiverse. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, you don't play the ox in the plow and then scrime to the bottom. Or we're not playing Moonfolk in Commander, and we're not Tomer. Uh, play the land, go to combat, all attack. Opponent blocks. Takes their beats. 
we will foretell behold the multiverse. Try to stay low enough that Robber the Rich can't steal something that matters. Leave up the counter. About it. Are we going to plow him for lethal? And have a colossal plow dream? Not countering that. That's fine. Oh. Huh. Okay. Well, I mean, that doesn't keep us from winning. But it does mean we're not going to win with Plow. Behold the multiverse. <laughs> Same pile. Do it again. <laughs> we will not give up on our dreams. Play a lad. Uh, giant Ox. Colossal. <laughs> Two behold. What a way to end it. What a way to end it. Two behold the multiverses in a row. We're Ox plus Plow. <laughs> Combat. Attack. Hedgeya. Not lethal. Sadly for our opponent, they can't crew the plow. Because it loses all ability. Opportunistic Dragon's weird. Opponent blocks and blocks. Goes to four. We get our plow back. Foretell. Pass the turn. Aw, oh, don't scoop, opponent. Don't scoop, let us plow ya. Kills an angel. I kind of hope our opponent lives because I want to win with these plows. I want to untap, double crew with giant oxes, double plow attack. That's all I want. That's all I want. That's it. Is that asking too much, opponent, to, uh, to double plow you? <laughs> that card name. <laughs> Why, wizard? Why could it be Colossal Ho or something? Well, I guess that's not any better. Uh, colossal Digging Device. <laughs> Opponent. <laughs> A Crow in War. This doesn't kill us, right? You know, we're going to let this go. That's fine. Opponent. I know, I know, if we counter it, we just win with the flyer, but that's not what we're about here. <laughs> Winning with flyers. Come on now. <laughs> Crack the shard. We'll keep an essence scatter just in case. Shard. Ugh. Alright. Yeah. Untap. Colossal Plow. Crew. Crew. Go to combat. Attack. <laughs> Up to ten. I know we could still be winning, but I want to attack with the plows. If we kill the robber of the ridge, they scoop. I want to actually attack with the plows. Like, we're trying to win, but we're also trying to win with the plows. Uh, land on... Yep. Go. This is going to force us to attack. That's fine. We would like to attack you with our plows. I think we plowed him. About it. Trying to figure out how to stop Colossal Plow with Giant Ox crewing it up. <laughs> Not having any luck, I don't think. Addix. Sure. That's fine. Passes. Plow. Plow. Land. Combat. Attack you. Gain six. Make a bunch of mana.
Plow in. <laughs> all right. All right, all right. Well, I know we could have won easier in a less interesting way, but sometimes the hard way is the, the better way when you're, uh, oh my goodness. <laughs> I was going to say when you're plowing. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this card name, seriously. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so, so what do we learn this week? <laughs> about Colossal Plow. And overall, I mean, it counts as a dream. We went three and two. Uh, both of our losses were to Yarian Piles, although in one of them, our opponent was obviously a Yarian deck that even had 80 cards, but somehow forgot their Yarian, but it was the same deck. So we lost twice to Yarian. We beat everything else. Uh... So what do we learn about, I guess, Colossal Plow in specific and the deck in general? As far as Colossal Spell Giant Ox, or Colossal Plow Giant Ox, it's very good in certain matchups. Uh, we got to see matchups against creature decks where Giant Ox on its own is a really good blocker, and that was key. And then we got to see Colossal Plow in that last game just go off, and the life gain's good. We did get the synergies of, like, Colossal Plow use the mana to behold the multiverse, or even better, cast a huge star and high money leash and use it to win the game. So we did get to see those synergies. On the other hand... Against other decks, where blocking isn't that important, Giant Ox doesn't really do anything without Colossal Plow. And then Colossal Plow, it still only has three toughness. It still gets got by a, a whole bunch of things. Skyclave Apparition, Frostbite, Opportunistic Dragon, apparently. I wouldn't have had that on my list before recording this episode, but... <laughs> you never know what you'll see in Geldab Standard, apparently. Uh, but the deck itself probably actually pretty sweet and i think outside of the colossal plow giant out uh, ox package what stood out to me the most was ghostly pilfer was actually really strong and responsible for some of our wins sadly it does die to bone crusher giant which probably means it's not actually a top tier card in standard but uh it did go off in some games we were able to beat the cycling deck just by ghostly pilfer being unblockable nico eris was actually really good i still think nico's gonna be good at some point and uh, the shards were key card advantage the removal was really good in some matchups the only thing i will say about the deck while i feel like this is a really good like colossal plow giant ox against the odds deck the sideboard does leave a bit to be desired. Uh, so the problem with the sideboard, I think Aegeus Turtle is a funny meme. I don't know if it's good. Avalanche Caller, I just don't think it's good, period. Confounding Conundrum has been a bit of a disappointment. Raven Form is good, but I wonder if we need Raven Form for removal when we're in white. Maybe it's just not necessary. Uh, Rewind is okay. Gadwick is fine in control matchups, but the biggest thing I'd say is we need more for the Saltai slash Yarion matchup. And that matchup our main deck's not very good we're not fast enough to pressure them we're not controlling enough to stop them so we just kind of wait around for them to emerge and ultimatum us and then our sideboard most of our counters are essence scatters which aren't good against yarion uh they are good in some matchups but i would like to see more negates in the sideboard more hate specifically for that matchup and also i think it might be worth considering a sweeper or two like we are sort of a creature deck but we're not super creature heavy if you actually look at our uh, deck stats. We have 18 creatures. Plow survives Wrath. So I think that a couple of Doom Scars or something could be worth considering as well. But I'm not complaining because on Meme or Dream, having a sideboard, period, is a good thing and better than not having one. But anyway, I mean, I guess we plowed them. And apparently, plowing is a dream rather than a meme. Uh, so that's been our Meme or Dream for this week. Colossal Plow in Keldive Standard. Thanks for watching. I hope you all enjoyed it, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.